12 best foods to prevent and reverse kidney damage. Eating the right foods can have a powerful effect on your health, right? Including your kidneys. From what kind of snacks you have to grab on the go or anything that fuels your body. Each ingredient creates an impact. To maintain kidney health, it is especially important to be mindful of incorporating kidney-friendly foods into your diet. In our video, today we have a list of 12 nutritional recommendations that can help protect and preserve your kidneys when worked in alongside the advice from your doctor, of course. So make sure to watch the entire video to get all the details and information so you can make informed decisions about nourishing and protecting your kidneys for life. Now, our kidneys perform numerous vital tasks throughout the body, right? The kidneys filter the waste and surplus water from the blood, creates urine, regulate electrolytes, and assist in managing your blood pressure and even your blood sugars. The kidneys also regulate your pH. It filters proteins, reabsorbs them, eliminates poisons packed for uh, or by the liver. Another function of the kidney is to create actually various hormones. What are they? Vitamin D, erythropoietin. These are the two primary hormones secreted by the kidneys. So the kidneys are responsible, the lost organ, to actually create the active vitamin D. Although you can take vitamin D from the diet or from the sun, but you know the real vitamin D, the active vitamin D, is created in your kidneys. Now, vitamin D is really required for calcium absorption, your bone health, and maintenance of your immune system control. So what does erythropoietin does? If you have advanced kidney disease, you probably know this hormone because doctors will give it to you because your kidney cannot make it anymore, right? Erythropoietin stimulates the synthesis of red blood cells. So it helps your body maintain optimum oxygen levels through good amount of red blood cells in your blood. So your kidneys are always working, day and night, right? They are processing more than 200 quarts of blood and get rid of more than two quarts of waste and water. A healthy kidney filters around half a cup of blood each minute to remove waste, extra water, and it creates urine. Urine then passes from the kidneys to the bladder, and then after that, you know what happens. The urinary tract includes your bladder, your kidneys, your ureters, right? They all have to be healthy. The waste elimination mechanism that the kidneys conduct is critical. Without that, the poisons, the acids, will accumulate in your circulation and your lymph tissue. This has the ability to poison your entire body and cause tissue damage everywhere. Toxins, the extra water, unstable pH, like acidic pH, and, and any high in, increase in your blood pressure, electrolytes that are accumulating, like too much potassium, too little sodium, etc., can all place a significant burden on the blood vessels and your heart. Now, more than 40 million American adults have kidney disease. Can you believe that? So, what's our population? 300. 40 million have kidney disease. The majority of them think that they're just fine. And the, most of them are unaware. There are various types of kidney disease, but chronic kidney disease is the most frequent, especially for a big research factor for cardiovascular disease. It's a chronic condition that doesn't improve with time either. So you have to preserve it. Now, high blood pressure is frequently to blame in addition to your diabetes, but additional kidney issues like kidney stones, urinary tract infections, glomerulonephritis, which happens with autoimmune disorders, they are all gonna cause inflammation in your kidneys and eventually affect the glomeruli, which are the tiny vessels in your kidneys that does the filtering. Many people do not notice symptoms of kidney illness until the kidneys are totally failing and there's a lot of protein in their urine. And even then, their GFR or creatinine will stay stable, but having protein in your kidney is a big sign that your kidneys will fail very quickly and you will end up with heart attacks or strokes even before dialysis. So take protein in the urine very, very seriously. Now, kidney disease symptoms 
may include if it is advanced, you know, you will start getting itchy, dry skin. You will have urge to urinate frequently. Uh, you'll have tiredness and low energy. You may have foamy urine because of the protein in there. And you may have swelling in your foot and ankle because you cannot get rid of the water. Again, diabetes and high blood pressure are the two main causes of kidney damage. Now, both of them harm your nephrons, which are individual units in your kidneys. They are microscopic filtering units that does the job for you. Now, each of your kidney has approximately 500,000 of these filtering nephrons. So they function by restoring the vital elements to the circulation, or reabsorbing them, and eliminating the trash, right? So following a diabetes and high blood pressure controlling lifestyle will significantly minimize your chances of developing kidney disease, along with the foods that I'm gonna to talk today. Of course, you try to avoid kidney stones, etc., as well. So renal failure or kidney failure can be caused by autoimmune problems as well, which sometimes hard to manage with just diet alone. But genetic problems, infections, toxins, physical trauma to your kidneys, all will cause problems and kidney failure. Now, maintaining a healthy weight is an important step, and there's so many studies showing that obesity and excessive weight is a problem for your kidneys and survival of your kidneys. And Obesity also increases the risk of diabetes and high blood pressure. But even if you didn't have diabetes and high blood pressure, just being obese will increase your risk of kidney failure. So some measures to lower your risk of getting kidney problems are, number one is exercise, which is underrated again. Most people don't want to deal with it, but it's great for maintaining healthy blood vessels, heart, and cholesterol. You should never smoke, right? And because when you are a smoker, toxins are released into circulation more, and smoking has a lot of toxins, now kidney has to deal with it. And stay hydrated, right? So one of the primary causes of kidney stone is lack of hydration. So if you are an addict to coffee and sodas or colas, you may want to calm down and get less of it because it will dehydrate you. So if you're just drinking colas and coffee, then you will not have water in your system as much, and you will have excessive amount of phosphorus because the phosphorus is one of the things that kidneys are trying to eliminate all the time. So if you are getting colas and sodas, even if they are diet, they have a lot of phosphorus, which basically makes the kidneys job very difficult. So. Avoid the foods that have been extensively processed and refined because they're a bunch of junk. And guess what? They have to be eliminated. The things that are high in saturated fats or trans fats or free radicals, too much sugar, too much sodium, they can add to the already heavy strain on your kidneys. They also, even if your kidneys don't fail, you will still end up with obesity or heart disease or high blood pressure, right? So another thing, if you already have kidney disease, uh, or signs of kidney disease, keep track of your protein intake. Now, a high protein diet can potentially harm the kidneys. Now, some people go on a carnivore diet, for example, right? So if you're a healthy young individual trying to lose weight, etc., carnivore diet for a while may not be a big problem. But if you're a diabetic already dealing with kidney problems, that's going to be a big problem. Your sugars will go down on carnivore diet, but your kidneys will succumb. So, why? Because high protein ingestion causes harmful ketones and products, especially urea, and you have to clear these poisons. The kidneys will go into overdrive, and you're going to increase the strain on these poor little organs. The kidneys spend a lot of time, it needs a lot of water to flush these hazardous proteins, uh, byproducts, and ketones away. Eating too much meat also implies consuming a lot of cholesterol, saturated fat as well, unless you're eating, you know, unless you have a lot of money and you always eat the highest quality meat, which is not the case for most people, then you're going to end up accumulating a lot of calories, a lot of saturated fat, and so forth. Instead, choose a clean, plant-based protein most of the time. I'm not saying don't eat meat. Eat, but in moderation, and choose plant-based proteins more often. Also, you can consume smaller amounts of protein, 
like a couple ounces instead of a whole chicken, for example, right? Uh, instead of having a, you know, 16 ounce of a steak, you know, you can go for an eight ounce, six ounce steak, right? So that will help your kidney and heart function. Now, if you are eating carbohydrates with high fiber, that will also slow the absorption. That will also help your kidneys deal better with the protein and anything else. But here are the 12 best foods to reverse kidney damage. Well, that's why you're watching the video, but I wanted to give you a good run down so that you understand what kidney disease means and what you need to do overall. These 12 foods are very important to make sure that your kidneys are functioning very well. Number one, red bell peppers. Now, these bell peppers are low in potassium because if you have kidney disease, you don't want to have excessive potassium, but you still want to have healthy diet, right? And these bell peppers are high in vitamin C. They're high in folate, vitamin B6, and fiber, which is most of you need when you have diabetes and kidney disease. There's a lot of antioxidants, which helps with energy production, blood flow, and metabolism throughout your body. Now, red blood cell production is also important, right? We talked about your kidney actually helps with red blood cell production. So you will need folate and B6, and that will help. Now, red bell peppers also contain lycopene. It's a potent antioxidant that protects the kidneys and prevents the kidney failure. Number two is cabbage. Now, cabbage contains fiber, folate, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin K, and the fiber in the cabbage and other leafy greens slow the nutrient absorption. This allows the kidneys and the liver to process the inflow of anything to your bloodstream. Of course, if you have bloating and problems with these foods, you have to also ease into them. You don't want to jump into them too quick or change your diet drastically right away. But if you can tolerate fiber in these foods, prevent blood sugar spikes, which is also not good for your kidney disease if that's happening too often. A lot of you think that you're doing great because your fasting blood sugars are great, but most of you don't realize that you spike after you eat. I tell my patients after you eat, a lot of people spike their blood sugar 100 to 200 points without knowing and thinking that, oh, my blood sugar is 100 right now, I'm good, and they never see the 200 to 300 blood sugar that happens only a few hours after they eat, and that is a problem. So you have to keep an eye on post-meal blood sugars, which damages all the blood vessels, including the blood vessels in your kidneys. Now, vitamin K is also important for coagulation, right? Cabbage includes a high concentration of phytonutrients, which function as an antioxidant as well, and anti-inflammatory and vitamin K. Cauliflower and broccoli, number three. They have a lot of vitamin C and folate, as we discussed, important for uh, red blood cells. Cauliflower is high in fiber and anti-inflammatory chemicals. Whether your kidneys are healthy or simply sluggish, cruciferous veggies are really beneficial for them. They should be avoided if your kidneys are in bad shape or if you have gout, though. So keep that in mind. Now, number four is leafy greens. Why? Leafy greens are high in vitamin C, folate, and fiber, and vitamin K, and a variety of phytonutrients that help reduce the kidney stress, lower the blood pressure, and balance the blood sugar, and fight the inflammation, which is a big thing in kidney disease. Now, consider including mustard greens, dandelion leaves, and turnip greens in your diet as well. Dandelion, in particular, promotes urine production, cleansing the kidneys, and lowering your blood pressure. Number five is, you're more familiar with this one, is garlic. So, allicin is found in garlic, and onions, and shallots, and chives, and leeks. But allicin is an organic sulfur molecule with an anti-inflammatory effect. It also fights illnesses, lowers the blood pressure, and can function as an antioxidant, which your kidneys need. Number six is asparagus. Asparagus, especially the asparagus stalks, has a lot of fiber. Asparagus phytonutrients decrease the blood pressure and have a cleaning impact on the kidneys and bladder by increasing urine output and breaking down uric acid, which is very important to clear from your body. This is, uh, again, going to help the prevention, uh, of course, but if you already have kidney disease, you should avoid asparagus since it is high in potassium. So if you are having problems with high potassium and high phosphorus, 
and you have an advanced kidney disease, then that may not be the best option. Number seven, apples. Apples are a good source of fiber. It can spike your blood sugar if you do too much, I agree. But the, the fiber in the apple is particularly effective at binding to and removing toxins from the digestive tract, especially the skin of the apple, before the body can absorb them. So that gives time for your kidney and reduce the burden on your kidneys, right? Apples also lower inflammation and cholesterol levels. There you have it. Three birds in one stone. Uh, number eight is berries. Berries like raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, they are great for kidney health detox. Berries are low in calorie, they won't spike your blood sugar, they are high in antioxidants, they are, they are high in phytonutrients, which all help protect your kidney cells and nephrons. They include vitamin C, fiber, folate, and manganese, as well as a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So, some such as cranberry also known to suit the urinary system. So if you have infections, actually a lot of people drink cranberry juice, just don't do too much to avoid blood sugar spikes, but sometimes it can even help prevent infections. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, cherries in small amounts also all help in kidney protection and cleansing. Raspberries especially contain something called ellagic acid, which is an antioxidant that has been linked to prevention of kidney disease and even certain cancers. Berries overall provide incredible antioxidants and health benefits. Now, number nine, you heard this from me like maybe a million times, but extra virgin olive oil, preferably cold pressed, or nuts and seeds and avocado or avocado oil. They contain vital fatty acids that reduce the inflammation and lower cholesterol and can alleviate the pain of kidney stones. Hmm, that's interesting, right? Some helpful fatty acid rich oils also are found in Moringa oil, which I have a video about Moringa as well. Olive oil is a good source of healthful fatty acids and is phosphorus free, which you don't want in your system when you have kidney problems. The majority of the fat in olive oil is oleic acid, it's a monounsaturated fat. Oleic acid is well known for its anti-inflammatory effects. Number 10, melons. Now you're gonna be like, what? Melons are high in sugar. Well, but they are high in anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, and provide a good source of hydration, especially in summer. So if you're out and about, you're at the beach, you're running around, eating some melons is not gonna hurt you, right? If you're physically active, you're gonna go take a walk, eating melons is not gonna help your blood sugars. Uh, especially if you're eating in moderation, because they help cleaning your kidneys, your blood, and your bladder. Even watermelon, they're high in water, and it's something called lycopene. Lycopene is a natural red pigment found in plant cells. It not only gives foods uh, like the watermelons and tomatoes their red color, but it is also a very strong antioxidant. That's why we say keep your plate colorful. Anything colorful? is going to help you. They're full of antioxidants. Now, number 11 is ginger. For hundreds of years, this spice has been utilized as a digestive aid, right? So, especially in, in China and Japan, ginger has been demonstrated to protect the kidneys from diabetes as well, even from alcohol and dehydration. Now, ginger, especially when you pair it with thyme, may provide even more protection. As thyme has been shown to reduce blood pressure and cholesterol levels too. This is a very advantageous to your kidneys because like we discussed, elevated blood pressure will harm your kidneys and everything else. Number 12 and the last, last one is turmeric is related to ginger and can similarly protect the kidneys from harm. Albeit is potassium contained makes it a little unsuitable for people who already have advanced kidney disease, but still it is pretty good uh, if you're watching your potassium levels through the blood, right? To get the most out of this spice though, combined with some black pepper. So piperine is the active element in black pepper. When uh, piperine is combined with curcumin, the main component in turmeric, it creates a potent mixture. Now, both of these chemicals have anti-inflammatory characteristics and can help with digestion, digestion, even your knees and your diabetes. 
That's why we have that in our advanced glucose support as well, in SugarMD advanced glucose support. But thanks for watching. I hope your kidney functions until you die because we want our kidneys function. Nobody wants to be on dialysis and taking the appropriate measures and eating the right foods will help you in the long run. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment below, please. Uh, we appreciate your thank yous. We appreciate your comments. Give a thumbs up, share this video. And if you're not subscribed, why not? What are you waiting for? Do it now. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.